So, <coughs> you come to me with some kind of thing. Okay. You propose it. I talk to you. <coughs> but we got a problem. You know, I can't pay more. I'm bringing in twice as much as I ever did before. We're doing 10 million, 15 million a month. Come on. Now that's serious money, you know? Because your bank boys got to come down a bit. No, I don't. Come on, that's crazy. We can't do that. Then that's too bad. So what am I going to do? Tony, sweetheart, we're not a wholesale operation. We're a legitimate bank. The more cash you give me, the harder it is for me to rinse. That's a problem. I didn't know. The fact is that uh, I can't even take any more of your money unless I raise the rates on you. You gonna arrest them? I gotta do it, Tony. The IRS come on, is coming come on. down. Come on, talk, talk, give me the chip. Come on, Jerry, let's talk. Talk to me, I man. Talk. Come on. I go low, you go high. Look, I know the game, man. This is business talk. Come on. Don't let talk me explain me to you something. The IRS is coming down heavy on South Florida. There's a Time magazine cover story that didn't have money. There's a recession in the country. I got stockholders I gotta be responsible for. I gotta do it, Tony. Listen to this guy, man. You're gonna learn from him. I gotta go 10% on the first 12 million. That's some denominations of 20. I'll go 8% on your $10 bills and six points on your five. I mean, a beer there. That's we it. go somewhere else, okay? There's okay. no place else to go. It's not a conspiracy. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I fly to cash myself to the Bahamas. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Once, maybe. Then what? Huh? Then what? You're gonna trust some monkey in a Bahamian bank with 20 million of your hard earned dollars? Come on, Tommy. Don't be a schmuck. Who else can you trust? That's why you pay us what you do. You trust us. Huh? You hear that guy? You gotta listen to him, man. You learn something. Stay with us, Tony. You're an old and well-liked customer. You're in good hands with us. And I gotta run. I said before. How's married life treating you? Better than you are. <laughs> Say hello to the princess for me, will you? She's beautiful. Okay. I'll see ya. Take care. You too. A cargo ship owned by J.P. Morgan has been seized by officials after one of the largest drug busts in the United States. Federal authorities in Philadelphia seized nearly 40,000 pounds of cocaine on a cargo ship on June 17th. According to Markets Insider, the size and street value of the illicit drug, worth around $1.3 billion, makes it the largest ever seizure by U.S. Customs and Border Protection. The cocaine was discovered on several containers on the Guyane, operated by the Mediterranean Shipping Company and owned by J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Federal prosecutors have decided to seize the vessel while the investigation proceeds. NBC News reported shortly after the bust that smaller boats allegedly delivered the cocaine to the cargo ship while it was sailing from Chile to Panama. Homeland Security investigation says that since the seizure, at least half a dozen of the crew have been arrested. J.P. Morgan declined to comment to Markets Insider regarding the story. I'm going to read a bit from the Market Insider. Heading... U.S. Customs just seized a ship owned by J.P. Morgan after authorities found one billion worth of drugs on it. Federal prosecutors in Philadelphia have seized a container ship operated by the Mediterranean Shipping Company weeks after authorities found more than one billion worth of cocaine on the vessel in what was one of the largest drug busts in American history. U.S. Customs and Border Protection seized the ship on July 4th. The 4th of July, a statement out Monday said the ship is owned by Klein Asset in a maritime strategy offered by J.P. Morgan Assets Management, according to a person familiar with the matter. It is operated by the Switzerland-based MSC. On June 17th, Border agents found 39,525 pounds of cocaine stash in several containers on the MSC Guyan at the Philadelphia Seaport. The, wow. The street value of the drugs was estimated at about $1.3 billion, making it the largest cocaine seizure by the agency. A seizure of a vessel this massive is complicated and unprecedented, but it is appropriate because the circumstances here are also 
unprecedented, U.S. Attorney William McSwain said, we found nearly 20 tons of cocaine hidden on this ship. At least half a dozen crew members have been arrested, according to Homeland Security investigations, and the investigation is ongoing. Charges include conspiracy to possess cocaine aboard a ship. I'm going to leave the link to this article in the description box. So you have cocaine that are filled to the top inside containers that are owned by JP Morgan Chase. So if you are banking with JP Morgan Chase, you are banking with a cocaine smuggling operation. What see what they put in these movies is not just a movie. Start paying attention. Okay? So now you have a bank that would not come out and say anything about it. Chase Bank, JP Morgan declined to comment. Why? Because they are banks. They do not have to comment. They fund wars. How did they slip up and get their cover blown? I don't know. But if people are paying attention, there are a lot of things happening in 2019. There are a lot of signs, a lot of sound signs. You have hurricanes, you have earthquake, you have billionaires dying in helicopters, billionaires with their daughters in helicopters crashing. You have billionaires being caught child drug trafficking, sex trafficking. You have a lot of things happening, crazy things, historic things happening in 2019. People should start paying attention to the time we are in. Insane, completely crazy, completely crazy. JP Morgan Chase is caught with potatoes filled with cocaine, 1.3 billion dollars and a few people went to jail yeah a couple of security officers police officers handlers smugglers they have their fall guys but that's about it they are the law they are above the law so if you think someone from jp morgan chase bank chase banking is going to jail see anytime you are mistaken unless one of these bankers come up dead because you have had bankers mysteriously come up dead. The government is busting the government, bringing in billions of dollars worth of cocaine. Wow. People at the docks are getting very, very careless. Import, export. They're getting very, very careless. Now, J.P. Morgan is a exporter of cocaine. These banks that people, American citizens, bank with, trust, export cocaine. Wow. This place, America, is, in fact, filthy. You can't talk your way out of this one. This is a prime example. So you have the government enforcing laws that they cannot uphold. America trying to prosecute and give time to, life to, people who break the law, but they break the law also. This government is called red-handed with bankers, J.P. Morgan, Chase Bank, bringing in billions of dollars of cocaine. And what J.P. Morgan, these banks do with this cocaine, they give it to gay members, they give it to pips, they give it to drug peddlers on the streets and they have them be the scapegoat of the people who are going to jail for pushing this dope when the banks are behind it all. Wow, wow, the banks. Chase, J.P. Morgan 
is behind it all. serious money, you know? Because your bank boys got to come down a bit. No, I don't. Come on, that's crazy. We can't do that. Then that's too bad. So what am I going to do? Tell me, sweetheart, we're not a wholesale operation. We're a legitimate bank. The more cash you give me, the harder it is for me to rinse. Oh, well, that's a problem. I didn't know. You know? The fact is that uh, I can't even take any more of your money unless I raise the rates on you. But you're gonna raise the... I gotta do it, Tony. The IRS come on, is coming come on. down. Come on, don't, don't give me the chip. Come on, Jerry, let's talk. Talk to me, man. I talk. Come on. I go low, you go high. Look, I know the game, man. This is business talk. Come on. Don't let talk me explain to, me to you something. The IRS is coming down heavy on South Florida. There was a Time Magazine cover story that didn't help any. There's a recession in the country. I got stockholders I gotta be responsible for. I gotta do it, Tony. Listen to this guy, man. You're gonna learn from him. I gotta go 10% on the first 12 million. That's in denominations of 20. I'll go 8% on your $10 bills and six points on your five. Made a beer there. That's we it. go somewhere else, okay? There's okay. no place else to go. It's not a conspiracy. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I fly to cash myself to the Bahamas. Oh, Come yeah. on. Yeah. Once, maybe. Then what? Huh? Then what? You're gonna trust some monkey in a Bahamian bank with 20 million of your hard earned dollars? Come on, Tony. Don't be a schmuck. Who else can you trust? That's why you pay us what you do. You trust us. Huh? You hear that guy? You gotta listen to him, you know, you learn something. Stay with us, Tony. You're an old and well like customer. You're in good hands with us. And I gotta run. I've said before. How's married life treating you? Better than you are. <laughs> Say hello to the princess for me, will you? She's beautiful. Okay. I'll see ya. Take care. You too. The prick. It is a case that has everything, everything except an arrest. And that struck some as odd because in an 80 page document of court papers, the bank admits to almost going out of its way to act as a financial clearinghouse for international pariahs and drug dealers. HSBC officials listed Mexico in its lowest risk category for money laundering during a four-year period when Mexican drug cartels were funneling over $700 billion through the bank. U.S. Attorney Loretta Lynch. The investigation revealed that staggering amounts of cash, hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars daily, were being deposited into HSBC Mexico using boxes specially made to fit through their teller's windows to speed the transactions. And it wasn't just the drug cartels that benefited from what prosecutors called the bank's willful failure to report suspicious activity. HSBC instructed an Iranian bank how to conceal $183 million in transactions. HSBC also admitted to cutting the number of internal watchdogs to save money. Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer. HSBC is paying a heavy price for its conduct. And under the terms of today's agreement, if the bank fails to comply with this agreement in any way, any way at all, we, of course, in the government reserve the right to prosecute the bank. Under the terms of today's settlement, nobody at HSBC will face criminal charges. Notre Dame professor Jimmy Garulli investigated money laundering cases for the Treasury Department. We're not talking about mere negligence. We're talking about a criminal scheme that was adopted as a policy of HSBC to look the other way with regard to suspicious transactions involving money laundering. Some would say that the message is if you break all the laws you can until you get caught, you may have to pay a lot of money, but you're not going to go to jail. 
that's a very short-sighted view, I think. Because in this case, they're obviously paying a great deal of money, but they also have had to literally turn their company inside out. And the message should be that that's what you have to do. So turn their company inside out. In a statement from its London headquarters, HSBC said it has cleaned house, firing top executives, taking back their bonuses. Now the bank has to demonstrate to a federal monitor that they're in compliance with all laws for five years. Scott? Well, John, with all of this apparent evidence, why didn't the Department of Justice press a criminal prosecution on the money laundering charges? Well, that's a question we kept asking today, and the closest we got to it was they said that they never found one bank official or any collection of bank officials acting together that were doing this on purpose. They painted a picture of a disorganized bank not communicating with itself that was collecting all of these fees and either not knowing or not wanting to know where it was all coming from. John, thank you very much. So, I do come to me with some kind of thing. Okay, you propose it, I talk to you. <clears throat> but we got a problem, you know, I can't pay more. I'm bringing in twice as much as I ever did before. We're doing 10 million, 15 million a month. Come on, now that's serious money, you know. Because your bank boys gotta come down a bit. No, I don't. Come on, that's crazy. We can't do that. Then that's too bad. So what am I gonna do? Tell me, sweetheart, we're not a wholesale operation. We're a legitimate bank. The more cash you give me, the harder it is for me to rinse. What? That's a problem. I didn't know. No. The fact is that uh, I can't even take any more of your money unless I raise the rates on you. You're gonna raise them. I gotta do it, Tony. The IRS come on, is coming come on. down. Come on, don't, don't give me the chip. Come on, Jerry, let's talk. Talk to me, man. I talk. Come on. I go low, you go high. Look, I know the game, man. This is business talk. Come on. Don't let talk me explain to, me to you something. The IRS is coming down heavy on South Florida. There was a Time Magazine cover story that didn't help any. There's a recession in the country. I got stockholders I gotta be responsible for. I gotta do it, Tony. Listen to this guy, man. You're gonna learn from him. I gotta go 10% on the first 12 million. That's in denominations of 20. I'll go 8% on your $10 bills and six points on your five. Made a bill there. That's we it. go somewhere else, okay? There's okay. no place else to go. It's not a conspiracy. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I fly to cash myself to the Bahamas. Oh, Come yeah. on. Yeah. Once, maybe. Then what? Huh? Then what? You're gonna trust some monkey in a Bahamian bank with 20 million of your hard earned dollars? Come on, Tony. Don't be a schmuck. Who else can you trust? That's why you pay us what you do. You trust us. Huh? You hear that guy? You gotta listen to him, man. You learn something. Stay with us, Tony. You're an old and well liked customer. You're in good hands with us. And I gotta run. I said before. How's married life treating you? Better than you are. <laughs> Say hello to the princess for me, will you? She's beautiful. Okay. I'll see ya. Take care. You too. A new report by In the Public Interest ind indicates that a lot of these private prisons that are run by Geo Group or Corrections Corporation of America actually have something written in their contracts that basically indicates that they need a an inmate quota. So what is an inmate quota? Well, they have these contracts with the certain states that they operate in, and in the contracts they say that they have to have a 90 to 100 percent occupancy. So that means that there is more of an incentive to push for tough on crime legislation and there's more of an incentive to lock up nonviolent drug offenders. So this is a big problem because one huge misconception, and I like to really emphasize this, is that private prisons save these states so much money. But keep in mind that they're not really private because they're funded by taxpayers. The politicians in each particular state will grant a certain amount of taxpayer money to operate these for-profit prisons. Now, this report shows you that a lot of these prisons have these very long-term contracts. They can be 20 years, they can be more than 20 years. Recently, California uh, signed a contract with um, a, a for-profit prison, and it is a five-year contract, so it seems very low, but I feel like that's just the tip of the iceberg. California yeah. has a huge problem with um, overpopulation in the prisons. Now, now, just to give you a little bit uh, of information from the report, let me read to you uh, what's currently happening in 
Arizona. Three privately run prisons in Arizona have contracts that require 100% inmate occupancy. So the state is obligated to keep its prisons filled to capacity. Otherwise, it has to pay the private company for any unused bed. So keep, just think about that for a second. That is insane. That means that if the state isn't funneling in as many inmates as possible to these private prisons, that means that the taxpayer has to pay for the unused beds in the so-called private mm -hmm. prison. Yeah, that, that's the free market in action, I guess. I mean, like just for the sake of argument, I try to come up with some other industry where you have, like if you're running a theater, you know, you gotta pack the seats. I gotta sell all my tickets. You don't do like a 7-Eleven. No other company is able to bargain in this way. I, I guess their lobby is just stronger than I had thought. Their lobby is extremely strong, and they work with Alec. Alec mm. works with the private prisons to pass or to continue tough on law. Yeah. I'm sorry, tough on crime laws. So that's why you see this continual war on drugs. That's why you see legislation like SB 1070 in Arizona getting passed because, well, all of a sudden, if you can detain and imprison undocumented immigrants before you deport them, mm -hmm. that's freaking awesome, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, these private prisons can make some money off of it, and it's all on your dime. I, I don't understand. Like, I, I get that there are certain areas where there are not a hundred companies bidding for something, but I have to imagine that if they come back with their deal and that, like, you have to fill every single spot or else you pay out the ass to us, I'd respond by saying, shove it up your ass, I'll get a different company to run the prison. Like, shouldn't that be the, the obvious response? Unfortunately, it's not because I'm sure the politicians are getting donations, but the idea that a contract would determine the percentage of seats uh, or beds in a prison that are filled, no. The crime rate determines how many people we have in prison, I thought. And there is a reason why we imprison more people than any other country in the world. There is a profit motive here, and we are allowing the profit motive to continue. For-profit prisons were established in the 1980s when we were locking away so many people for nonviolent drug offenses that these companies realized that there's a profit to be made off of it. So let me give you some more information from the report that just blew my mind. Arizona, Louisiana, and Oklahoma, and Virginia are locked in contracts with the highest occupancy guarantee requirements with all quotas requiring between 95 and 100 percent occupancy. I, I, it's totally naive. I, mean, I sometimes wish that we could just take the, all these influential people who are able to get politicians to do whatever we want, just give them a private island. Go there. Give them beautiful women or whatever they want. So they just stop <laughs> messing with their politics. Give them beautiful politics. women yeah, because yeah, yeah, they're no. objects to well, be given. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they get them. Trust me. <laughs> if they come to L.A. But no, like the idea that I, I just don't understand the power behind them. Like there should be some sort of obvious, like we just... Uh, took $39 billion out of uh, SNAP over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have the money for food stamps that stop literally disabled people, veterans, and children, for the most part, from starving to death. We don't have money for that. But we do have enough money to change the laws to make sure that we put people in prison. And if we mess up and not enough people go to jail, if, like, society gets, you know, better and less violent and all that, they still get paid. And politicians go with straight faces to the public and they say that this is the way it should be. Like, we have to cut the snap, we have to pay for the private prisons, and most people don't just don't care because I guess they don't go to Salon or they don't watch the Young Turks, and that's unfortunate. I wish at times that we had the ability to sort of co-opt popular culture to advance our political agenda. Like, if we could just get Miley Cyrus to grind up on a private prison, <laughs> maybe would people would pay attention to it and we could do something about these laws being pushed by Alec.